Hey guys, what's up? If you're watching this video, chances are you're interested or at least want to learn a little bit more about live streaming. So, what is live streaming and how do you do it? Well, in this series, I'm going to be teaching you with the ins and outs, the hardware, the software, and everything you need to know to get started live streaming, or at least what your favorite streamers are doing to get started. So, episode one, I, I hate saying episode one, but whatever. The first part of this series is gonna be talking about hardware. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, your fancy XLR microphones and your webcams with lights on them and keyboards and mice. I'm talking about your actual computer hardware. So you can build something like that. That's a streaming PC. We'll talk about that later. So what do you actually need to live stream? Well, first thing, I'm going to say this disclaimer. Any reference I'm making here implies that you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. You might not think RAM or you may, maybe, may, maybe you're maybe not, you think that RAM has to do with live streaming. But here's the thing, just generally speaking, to do multiple actions like gaming, streaming, maybe having an internet browser on your other monitor to view a live stream, you're gonna need RAM. And you just, 16 gigs is the minimum amount of RAM to have in a system in 2020, okay? So first step, 16 gigs of RAM, end of story, no negotiation. I don't care who was able to do this or what on eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs, and, and that's it. So let's move on to the two main factors in streaming, your graphics card and your CPU. Now I was on Twitter recently and some people were giving advice and they think that the GPU, AKA the graphics card, those aren't interchangeable, but you can just, I'm just gonna call them the same thing for the sake of the video. That the GPU, AKA graphics card, whatever, is the most important factor for streaming. Well, that can be correct, but it also could be incorrect. And let's talk about that now. So, there are two types of streaming, well, two main types of streaming. GPU encoding, which uses the built-in encoder, or for, you know, in unexperienced terms, the streamer, I guess, whatever. No, I'm just going to call encoder, which basically the process of encoding is taking the data that you're putting on your PC, you know, the game, and sending it, recording it, and sending it up to Twitch, where it can be uh, opened back up and put onto a screen for everyone to watch within seconds. That's encoding. So... The GPU encoder is the built-in encoder into your graphics card. And then there's software encoding. That's called hardware encoding. And then there's software encoding, which is the X264 encoder that is uh, not built into your CPU, but is uh, on your PC that your CPU has the challenge. I should not be pressing on that. Has the challenge of running. So the CPU is in this whole thing. It's just in this motherboard, so I don't drop it. That little chip is my 7700K. So... Which one is better, hardware encoding or software encoding? Well, quality-wise, software encoding is better. X264 is a higher quality. Now, NVIDIA's new NVENC encoder for the Turing architecture has made strides and actually pretty close, but all in all, above all else, the X264 software encoding is better. CPU encoding is the best one for quality, but that might not be the best one for you. So, let's talk about that now. Hardware encoding, although not as high quality, does have its place. But let's start off with the question, which one of these graphics cards do you think is better for just live streaming? This 1660 Ti that's, you know, kind of plasticky and, you know, blower style cooler and small PCB. Or this monster AMD Vega 64 liquid cooled graphics card uh, with a radiator and this giant, you know, brushed aluminum look. Which one do you think is better for just live streaming? Well, as you expected, the answer is this, the 1660 Ti. And that's because, although I do love AMD cards because they're powerful and they're great for gaming and stuff like that, for streaming, NVIDIA is miles ahead. Their new, especially the new Turing encoder on their newer series of graphics cards is just such a higher quality than AMD's encoder. AMD has focused on like multi-stream and stuff like that, but you don't even need to know. It's just not as high quality. And that's why when someone's building a gaming system, I recommend AMD graphics cards. But if you're building just, you know, a streaming and gaming system and you may not have the best CPU in the world, I highly recommend an NVIDIA graphics card. So why would you use hardware encoding if you, especially if you have an AMD graphics card? Well, there's basically one main reason, and that's because you have a maybe a great CPU, 
but it's not a very high core count. Maybe you have a 9700K, and that's even arguable there, where it doesn't have hyper-threading. Or maybe you have a, I don't know, i5-8400. Even that CPU. I'm trying to think of, well, 7700K, that's a great one. Maybe you have a 6700K, a 7700K, a 7500K, or 7600K, something like that. You have a 4-core, 8-thread, or 4-core CPU, which is basically what I would consider the minimum nowadays. 4 cores, 4-threads, um, though realistically 8-threads. That's great for gaming, because games can't really use more than four to six threads uh, nowadays. And yes, there might be some outliers, but that, that's generally speaking the amount of cores and games use. Really, four to six. I think Battlefield Five got up to six, but that's besides the point. So, let's say you only have a four-core CPU, and your game is using all of them, which is great. Your game is scaling across all your cores and using the max amount of power it can from your CPU. But that, le that leaves you nothing left for streaming, and that's where hardware encoding comes in. Your graphics card is great because it has thousands of tiny little just one use cores. Now some you know they have different types of cores but basically generally speaking your graphics card has thousands of what are known in Nvidia as CUDA cores. Now I forgot what AMD is good like compute units or something but CUDA cores. Now some of those cores or a lot of them are going into your game but there's some other things that's known as the encoder on your graphics card. Which you can use your GPU's encoder to live stream without having an effect on your CPU or even having much effect on your game depending on your graphics card. Now I'm using what I consider the perfect example of a budget streaming card, the 1660 Ti. Now, I don't r normally recommend this card for a gaming PC because I just think, especially in the used market, there's just a lot of better options, like use 1080 or something like that, or even on the AMD side, there's just better options. But for streaming, this card rocks the new Turing encoder from, a from NVIDIA, which is, although not as good as software encoding, the highest quality graphics card encoder you can get. So, if your CPU is pinned at 100% and just cannot scale and cannot spare any more resources for streaming, graphics card encoding is where it's at. It's not as high quality, but it won't take away from your game experience and it allows your CPU to work just on the game if it has a low core count. But, that's hardware encoding and that's the reason for it. It's lower quality, but you can use it if your CPU doesn't have enough cores. But what if it does? What if you're rocking an 8-core or 16-core or, in my case, 12-core CPU? Well, then you end up with something like this. This is what I call Threadripper. It's using a Threadripper 2920X. That is a 12-core, this is 10, but 12-core 12, 12 CPU, a Threadripper 2920X. That is plenty of cores to, you know, use 4 to 6 for gaming and have 8 to 6, 6 to 8, or whatever, more for streaming on the side. Well, on the side. But this is the case that you should be using software encoding, is if you have plenty of high-speed cores to do it with. So on 9900K, you've got eight cores, 16 threads. Let's say using four cores for the game or six cores for the game. That leaves you with, you know, up to 12 for live streaming. 12. That leaves you at least four physical cores for live streaming. That's about how much I recommend. My recommendation for CPU streaming is always four extra cores, or as in my case, eight cores. I always recommend eight cores, no matter what game you're playing, no matter what system, eight core CPU is my recommendation. So if you are looking at like, well, I have to get a 9900K, that's got eight cores, wrong. If you are on a budget and you really wanna get an eight core for streaming because you wanna get the highest quality live stream you can get, I highly recommend an AMD based system. That'll allow you to have eight cores or you know 12 cores at a much lower price than an Intel spec. But that's besides the point. So CPU encoding X264 is much higher quality and if you have extra cores, yes, you might see because it is software, any software running on your computer that isn't just your game will have a slight performance impact on your game. That's why all those RGB softwares like IQ and Synapse, they, you might not notice it and you might think, well, it's just RGB. They are software and they might just take a little bit away from your game experience, but honestly, it's not that noticeable. And if you have a high core count CPU, that effect is negligible. So, you will notice, especially in some games where they don't like OBS. So, in conclusion for the hardware part of this series, 
CPU or software encoding X264 encoder is the highest quality encoder you can get. It allows you to lower your bitrate, meaning it could be better for your actual internet, which we will talk about in a different part, is how it affects you know your internet speed and stuff like that. But this is just the hardware section. So software encoding will give you the highest quality stream that you can have, that allow you to get your 1080p, 60 FPS, etc. If your CPU and the rest of your system just can't handle software encoding because your CPU might not have enough cores or even have a high enough clock speed, though realistically it's all about core count, then hardware encoding, and I've got these you know, GPUs in front of me just so I can hold them, hardware encoding is your best option. You can still have a pretty high quality stream depending on what GPU you have. So recommendation is definitely an NVIDIA GPU and as new as you can get, even if it's just a 1660 Ti, um, is my recommendation for GPU encoding. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. I know it was more talking than showing, but the next few parts will be you know showing settings and, and doing network and stuff like that. But I hope you guys kind of enjoyed the first part, talking about the hardware that you actually need for streaming. In terms of the most important parts, obviously you need the rest of the PC. But that's at this point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Streaming. And you might think, you know, you just need a CPU and a normal computer to start live streaming. But uh, in part one, where we're talking about the hardware, I'm going to uh, at least explain that to you a little bit more.